In the past, I've shown you how to paint up your individual tanks in ways that look good, but are often quite time consuming to pull off. This problem is compounded when you want to paint up a whole army of them, something that is very common in games of Flames of War. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to paint a whole late war Sherman platoon using a quick but effective scheme, allowing you to get your army completed and onto the tabletop in as little time as possible. You'll notice that I have a number of late war models of Sherman here. I have three 75mm, a jumbo and an easy 8, all of which have been primed black. Priming is that ever important first step to painting that gives you a good surface to paint on, but it can also assist your colour scheme too. I use an airbrush primer here on these, but it's not a requirement. Feel free to use whatever you have to hand, be it aerosol, airbrush or brush on. After priming, the first step was to create a reddish brown coloration across the armor surface using some flat brown. This would serve two purposes. First, it would create a lighter surface that would allow the next layer of olive drab to apply more easily, but it would also help to create a dirty and weathered surface. I applied this paint using an extremely quick and simple technique known as dry brushing. This involves taking a large brush, dipping it into the paint and wiping the paint onto a surface. This helps to spread the paint through the bristles as well as removing any excess. This brush was applied across the entire surface of the tank where it formed up mainly on the flat surfaces. However, the recesses remained untouched and the original black primer remained visible. This combination of speedy application whilst also helping to bring out the surface details is super useful for speed painting and is the technique that I'll be employing across this tutorial. Once each of the tanks in my platoon had been dry brushed with the flat brown, I then repeated the same dry brushing process using some US olive drab. However, instead of covering all of the tank surfaces like I'd done previously, I instead focused my application to a slightly smaller area than before, so just a bit of the flat brown was still visible. I also avoided the tank tracks themselves, using a smaller brush when necessary so that just the bogies inside the tracks were covered with the green colouring. Once this was done, it left me with a more recognisable olive drab coloration. To finish off the armour, I used some green brown and yet more dry brushing. I very lightly applied a small amount of the light greenish brown paint so it only built up onto the harder edges. By making these parts lighter, they contrasted more strongly against the dark green surfaces and black that was still visible in the recessed areas. As a result, this created a much greater degree of depth in the model surface. In order to bring out a few of the surface details and to help add a little variety, I decided to paint the stowed equipment and pintle mounted 50 cal with some black. I added this to my wet palette first and slightly watered it down to make it easier to apply. This was probably the most time consuming part as I had to tackle the small bits of equipment. But fortunately, there weren't too many details like this to paint so I didn't have to spend too much time doing so. At this stage, the models were perfectly serviceable in games. They had a decent level of detail and an authentic colour scheme, but there were still a couple more steps that could be performed to improve things a little better. The first used dry brushing once again and some Iraqi sand. I focused this tan colour across the tracks, bogies and sides of the tank, essentially anywhere that you would expect dust and dirt to accumulate onto. I use a combination of the usual dry brushing technique, but also mix it in a little stippling to create some small flecks and lumps of dried mud. To bring out some of the details in the 50 cal and stowage items, I then picked out some of their edges with some of the metallic paint, oily steel. I carefully highlighted these areas, creating a scratched and damaged effect to the metal. You can also use this paint over some of the metal track links, resulting in areas that look like they've been worn down and cleared of some of their mud revealing the metal links below. And with that, the five models were completed and just required a blast of matte varnish to seal things in, which left me with the following. And here we have the completed Sherman Platoon, which I was able to paint from plastic to finished in just a few hours. This means that you can easily get your whole Flames of War US Army painted up and looking good on the tabletop in no time at all. 
Now there are a few extra details you can add here and there. Decals are a good example and you can find a few of those in my more in-depth Sherman guide, which I'll include a link to above. I'll include all the paints used in this guide in the description along with some affiliate links. So if you're looking to try out some of these things for yourself while supporting me in the process, I would be extremely grateful. Speaking of which, let me say a huge thank you to my ever generous supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Dakota the Destroyer, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Lindbergh, Lyconian Primarch, Merrick, Mr. Grimm, Swedsman, and Tim. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, then it is the kind-hearted people such as yourself that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.